What's going on everyone? Today um, I'm doing a little vlog in regards to changing the seals of my scissor lift. There isn't uh, a lot of information in regards to how to service your scissor lift. There's a lot of guys that have picked up these scissor guys and girls that picked up these scissor lifts for their garage. I have one. I love it. But unfortunately, I think the seals inside of the actual piston are starting to leak because what's happening is as it's going to higher heights, um, there's a little pressure relief valve on each of the cylinders and what happens is it spews out um, hydraulic fluid, which means that there's probably an internal seal that's damaged. Um, the company I got it from uh, sent me a replacement kit for both of the pistons. Both of the pistons are having this issue. And today I'm going to show you guys how I do it on my left. Uh, just to make it easier. I don't think there's a video out there that shows you how to do it So this will show you how to do it provided of course you have the the, the, the seal kit. So stay tuned Okay, so this is the lift over here and uh, this is a, a two post uh, Scissor lift. I love it um, This is uh, one of the most common uh, designs that are out there so many different companies sell them and private label them They uh, they do come from China. That doesn't mean anything um, they are decently built. I've, uh, I've done a lot of service on, on my own vehicles on these things and I really, really love the lift. But I don't like it when it starts to spew out and, uh, and leak. And what ends up happening is if you're going on the higher heights, obviously using the control panel, as you can see over here, the piston lifts up and uh, there's pressure relief uh, ports over here. Let me zoom in. in. And then what happens is that it goes up. Obviously, this I replaced the seal on this one. I'm going to show you guys how to replace the seal on the other one. But what happens is the fluid, hydraulic fluid, literally spills out through here, and it causes like a little stream that comes out um, because of the seals being torn out. Now, uh, we weren't sure at first why this is happening. I thought maybe it's the setup of the actual lift. It is not the setup of the actual lift. Uh, it was determined by the manufacturer that it in fact is a breakage inside one of the seals and in fact when we did remove this uh, um, today I did notice that one of the o-rings was completely raptured so that's been all replaced hopefully it shouldn't happen uh, just make sure that you guys are, are, are careful when you're doing this make sure that the actual lift itself is locked right now it's in the locked position so uh, the piston um, could be removed I don't fully remove the piston obviously because of the fact that oh here's the seal actually the seal is right here, so as you can see, it's uh, it's completely gonzo and stuff like that. Plus, there's an O-ring in there that we're going to demonstrate in a little bit to show you um, how it is. But uh, yeah, so anyway, so that's that's that. Um, obviously, the zoom on these phones is terrible. But anyways, um, so make sure that first of all the lift is secured and it's locked position. I also put a piece of wood underneath just in case for safety. I mean, once the frame is secured and in the lock position, the piston's pretty much. Uh, not not used in a way so um so you can you can get at it what you got to do is there's a pair of uh, retaining clips on my particular lift on the top over here there's a pair pair of retaining clips here and then basically what you do is you just top out this uh, this rod and that allows you to lift the piston out of the way and then take this apart which we're going to demonstrate in a minute and then you'll be able to um, to actually take out the whole assembly and then change the seals that you need to and putting in new Hydraulic fluid, this should never leak again. If it does, you know, you can always order another seal, but this is very simple to do by yourself, actually. Don't be afraid to do. Obviously, I'm not recommending you guys do it because you have to have some, uh, be mechanically inclined. So this is not, uh, you know, how to step by step on how to do it yourself. I'm not responsible for anything if anything happens by watching this video, but it's just basically a video to show you sort of like get familiar with uh, what happens and stuff like that when it comes down to these lifts. So uh, I'm going to move over now to the other side and uh, show you guys more because I actually pulled out the, the rod on this one here. So just stay tuned for a sec. Okay, so you don't actually have to remove the retainer ring on this side. As long as you remove the retainer ring on one side, you're able to pull out this rod because what this rod will do, obviously as I mentioned before, it will disengage this piston right here. And what you're going to do is um, there's a lock top over here and then what you could do is you can loosen it up with like even a coil over purge which is what we're going to use in this particular case but if it's really really tight you want to tap it a little bit with a hammer and I'll show you guys in a second but the whole idea is free it out you don't really have to remove the bottom fittings and everything especially for my, my style lift you can basically pull it out just enough um, here so you can pull out the, the piston out so so it just makes it easier for, for replacement like replacing this seal doesn't take more than 20 minutes so uh, I'll show you guys in a second how we free this up. So I basically tap this with a little punch and a, and a hammer in order to loosen this piece up so I can actually now unscrew it with my hand. 
because what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this up so I can remove the piston assembly and uh, we'll pull it out put it on the table so very easy so there's these little relief ports I don't know if you, can, you guys can see I, I, I there you go there's a little relief port over here and what that does is it makes it easier for you to use a spanner wrench from like a coil over or just gently tap it with uh, with a punch and a hammer in order to loosen this up these are not really super tight like that so I'm just going to remove it and then I'm going to show it to you guys how it looks on the table okay so as you guys can see look at it this o-ring seal is just completely raptured so it wasn't sealing the uh, the oil compartment in order to uh to make sure that the seal doesn't go through now Here's something very important to notice. Um, actually, no, this is the washer right here. So we're gonna remove that. This is, by the way, the new replacement kit. So this O-ring completely ruptured. Terrible. Um, probably a good idea for the manufacturers to start manufacturing these O-rings from polyurethane or, or nitrile or something like that, which is a lot more durable than the rubber because this rubber has a tendency to shatter, but. You never know and then here's the actual seal over here so we're going to pull this off because we have a new uh, washer or um, so we're going to take that off and we'll put all the old stuff over here these are going to the garbage and we're going to pull this off and it's very important to notice the direction of how this is sitting because it appears that the lip is actually over here not over here so Let's see, the writing, we're going to find out where the writing is, and that's how you should go in, because this seal has writing on top. If you guys can see there's some writing on top over there. Um, that's how you're going to orient. Use the writing to orient how the seal is supposed to go to. So we're going to remove the old one, and also the seal, as you guys can see, is deteriorated as well. I'm not really sure why they failed, but if you notice, the lip is pointing upwards, towards here, which means that this part is going like this so this part is going to go in here now i'll share a little secret with you guys we tried putting it in this way where the lip is going towards the actual reservoir of oil and we had a very very hard time to put it in so we decided to actually put it in and we got lucky because before removing the second piston which is what this is uh, we didn't really know the orientation so, so this just confirms uh, the manufacturing orientation and that shows that the lip um, portion is um, facing um, well, the lip, this is what I call the lip. The opening is facing up, and this is facing the inside barrel of the actual um, piston. So this goes towards the, or for our particular lift, right? This one goes towards the, um, the, the, the piston itself, so it's gonna sit like that. I'll demonstrate how I put it on after I've confirmed it, but there should be a writing on top. So I'm gonna slowly try to remove it um, from here, and then I'll be able to sort of ascertain and then you just got to use a puller like that and then completely remove it. But from the looks of it, I think I'm right where... There you go, the seal is off. And where's the writing? Oh, I'm incorrect. This is a weird seal. This is a weird seal. It, it seems like... It seems like... I'm not sure. This is really weird. I guess it folded over. So I guess maybe it has to align this way, throw it in. Which, which makes no sense. Okay, anyways, uh, so we're gonna clean this off. Let's make sure this is clean. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray some uh, Break for it because you can lose remaining degree there. And I'm going to make sure that any sort of pieces or anything like that are all cleaned from this piston. Make sure that everything is clean. And then 
This is the new O-ring. Make sure that the O-ring is clean. We're gonna get it a little bit greasy, so we're gonna put it on. The O-ring goes here for my particular lift. It's really easy to put it on, so we're gonna put it on here. Oops. So this is what raptured. And I guess a piece of it went on, and this is the debris left over here. Uh, probably not reuse it because we got one. The way you do, you do these is you twist them around because that way it creates a, a nice, uh, and then also bend these in like that. Not too hard, you don't want to kill it. But this will go over here, just like that. Maybe a little bit more. The more you twist it, the more it will kind of retain that roundness, which is what you want. There you go. Just basically twist it, make sure it sits on the groove, sits nice and tight. So if it doesn't go nice and tight, just basically twist it more in order to have it. So that's looking good so far. Always inspecting for any debris or nicks or anything like that. Now I'm there. Now this is how it was put on on the actual piston. So let's try to follow the way it is and uh, put this seal on like that. Now I've watched a bunch of videos that said that the lip, which I guess the opening, has to be facing towards, and I think the writing is over here. The writing is over here, so this is how it was sitting, so it looks like the writing has to be on top. So this is the uh, appropriate orientation. Potentially, I might have to remove the other piston and, uh, and replace it, but I'm gonna see. I'm actually gonna do a comparison, believe it or not. See which way it's gonna work on my left. One piston is gonna have it the other way, and one piston is gonna have it this way, which is supposed to be the proper way, and we'll just basically, um, I don't know, find out what happens and then we'll go from there. So this is ready for uh, for assembly and we put it right into the uh, into the piston because it's nice and clean. So you want to take some clean hydraulic fluid, which I'm going to take now. Stop it. Yep. Okay, so just take a little dab of hydraulic fluid. Make sure it's nice and clean, brand new hydraulic fluid with no debris on it and sort of just baste everything in here. So it makes it easier for the assembly to go in and then put it right back into the piston. So um, let me just bring it up here this is the piston right here we supported it like that so it doesn't fall over as you can see and then what's going to happen is we're going to slide this whole new assembly with new o-rings right into that assembly of course you got to make sure that there's no debris in there from the old o-ring so we previously cleaned this to make sure that there's no debris inside there make sure nice and smooth and then basically you put it right back in so we'll basically slide that in and then as best as you can and then we'll tighten it up Fill it back with hydraulic fluid and test it out.